We just want to honor the mothers this morning, what they mean to us, and what God has placed you in people's lives uh, for, and your kids that you've you've had, you know, uh, just just an honor to have all these women that, and what they stand for this morning. And we want to pray over this these mothers this morning. As they give this rose out, we'll pray here in just a moment.
Church, if you will, just stay right here just a moment. If you will, stand all over. Let's uh, pray over these mothers that God will uh, give them a divine just uh, a fire for their families because they are the glue that holds it together. I'm telling you, I couldn't do it without mine, and I know uh, all these husbands couldn't do it without yours. So let's pray this morning and ask God's uh, grace in this this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father.
give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Give this band and these worship team praise. Hand clap of this morning as well. Hallelujah. Isn't it good to know that he's for you? Man, my Bible says if God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. Nobody can stand against me if God is on my side. So good to have you in service today at Lighthouse of Hope Ministries, all of our visitors. We welcome you. You're here today with your mother for Mother's Day. You're uh, here for whatever reason. We're glad you're here. Amen. We invite you back anytime and every time. Amen. To be with us in the house of the Lord. Amen. I want to give you just a, a, a little Mother's Day sermon, I guess we could say, hopefully. Amen. Just for a few minutes. Try not to hold you too long today. No, it's a very special day. Amen. I had the privilege last night. I uh, so was privileged to still have his mom. I went by last night. I left the men's meeting and my mama was sitting on her porch. Amen. And I stopped real quick, turned around, went back and sat on the porch. For about an hour and a half with mom and daddy to sit there and talk. Amen. It's a privilege to still have my parents at 85 and 80. Amen. Still doing really well. Amen. If you don't this morning, our prayers were with you. Amen. My wife is not with me this morning. Uh, they lost their grandmother in September. And this is the first year without Granny Bernice. And she was the glue that held the community together, not just the families. Amen. And Wendy looked at me this morning with tears in her eyes and said, Would you be with would it bother you if I went to church with my mama today to sit with her? And I said, absolutely not. Amen. So she, her, her heart is with us. Amen. We've been at this for about 25 years. Amen. She's missed two or three services. Amen. And a couple of them was for Mother's Day. Amen. And I don't blame her one bit. Amen. So uh, we appreciate you being here today. Hope you got something from uh, the worship today. Turn with us if you would. I don't have it up on the board. 2 Kings chapter number 4. I've used this passage of scripture a couple of different times for Mother's Day. It's one of my most favorite uh, Bible stories out of the whole Old Testament. I and mean, it just simply talks, and if I was to have a title this morning, it would be A Mother's Faith. I mean, I grew up with three other brothers and a sister, and my dad was a pastor from the time I was born. And we were raised in a 12 by 60 mobile home that my daddy basically pulled, Brother Mike knows, we just basically pulled that trailer from church to church. And that's, we lived in it in Beaumont and in Avery and in McLean. Amen, and you, you, uh, you'd have to be a pastor's kid, a PK, to know, amen, some of the background with that, but it was kind of small, amen, for a family of six, so I grew up in the room over in the corner with mom and daddy, and I don't remember a time as a child growing up that my mom and daddy ever went to bed without one of them on one side of the bed and the other on the other, and a lot of times joining hands across the bed, that they didn't go to God on their knees. And I remember every one of those services or every one of those prayers. My mama didn't start with her problems. My mama started with her children. Of course, I guess you said a lot of times we probably were her problem. <laughs> But I remember nightly and daily. And I can remember as a teenager when I got old enough to go out on my own. And, uh, Wendy and I started dating at 15 and we, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't be gone. And I can remember nights coming in and walk in the house and try to be as quiet as I could be. And the house wouldn't be quiet. I could hear mom in the back room. She was still praying for me when I was a teenager. All my other brothers and sisters had gone out. They had families and had moved out. 
And I don't believe that there's a day that goes by now that my mama still don't find herself in the back room praying for her children. Had a Sunday school teacher said years ago when I was trying as a teenager to trying to run from God and as a teenager God was dealing with me about ministry and I was running and trying to get away from it as hard as I could go. And I heard a Sunday school teacher say one time, your mom's prayers can't save you. But what your mom's prayers can do is your mom's prayers can pray a hedge of protection around you. And those prayers can keep you until God will and God does save you. A mom's prayers are totally different. Than, and I'm not saying that dads are not important. We'll get them next month or something. You know, somebody will. Amen. Next month with the men. A mother's faith is different. Amen. A mother has a different relationship with her children than a father does. My boys love me to death. Now, there's no doubt about that. But Caleb is 21 years old. And on a daily basis, he'll go to his mama's recliner. And he'll just crawl up in her lap and put his arms around. You can't even see her no more. She's just kid. <laughs> Because of how big he is. But but that's the relationship that a mama and a son have. A mama and her children has a different, there's a different bond there. A mama will know what's wrong with her children sometimes when a daddy don't have a clue. Because there's a relationship there with the mother and her children. This is the story in 2 Kings chapter number 4 of a Shunammite woman. And I'm going to read two verses just for the sake of time this morning. Amen. This is a long story. I'm going to read verse number 23 and verse number 26. It's just going to be pulled out of the middle of a story. But when I go through the story, these two verses will make a lot of sense to you. Verse number 23 said, And she said, Whether wilt thou go to him? Or, and he said, Whether wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor the Sabbath. This is what I want you to hear. This is what this Shunammite woman made this statement. And she said, it shall be well. Verse number 26, it said, run now, I pray thee to meet her. And say unto her, is it well with thee? Is it well with the husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. May God add his blessings to his word this morning. A mother's faith, if I was to have a title for this message this morning. This is the story of a little Shunammite woman. The prophet Elisha is the one doing the talking in the other scriptures uh, in this story. This Shunammite woman, uh, if you read back in the chapter number four, Elisha has just uh, 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 performed one miracle in another place. Uh, and, 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 uh, and there had been many pots had been filled with oil. And I preached that the other, while I was studying last night for this message. I got two different messages wrote at the top of the page. And I can't wait to preach at some other time. But when but, but we get down to verse number 8 of chapter number 4. And it says, And there fell upon a day that Elisha passed to Shunem. And there was a great woman there, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. This woman that we're reading about, this woman of Shunem, was a married lady, and she had a husband that was there. She was a rich woman. She had money. She had a nice home. She had a lot of, uh, of worldly possessions. Uh, but we find that she was also a godly woman. Uh, we find that she was a woman of faith. Uh, and the Bible said that Elisha passed by one day to where she was. Uh, and she constrained him to come in and to eat bread with her. And she put him up for the night. And it goes on to tell us in the story that as often as Elisha would pass by her house, uh, he would turn into her house and she would prepare them a meal and she would prepare for them a place. Uh, you go on and read over in the rest of that chapter that she goes to her husband and she said, we need to go up into the upper part of the house uh, and we're going to build a room for Elisha and his servant uh, so that when they pass by, they'll know uh, that they have a place to 
to stay. Uh, and they did. They went up into the upper part of the house, uh, uh, up onto the roof part, and built him a large living space and furnished it with everything that you would need. And Elisha would pass by every time that he got close to where she was. Uh, he would go in. And he became very close with this family. Uh, and, 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 and every time that he went, he went and, and stayed up in there. Uh, the story goes on to tell us over in the middle of this chapter in verse number 12. Uh, it said in the last to call Gehazi his servant uh, and said call this Shunammite woman uh, and ask her what would she have us to do uh, to repay her for her kindness. Uh, amen. If you were here during the Sunday school hour this morning the prophets didn't get uh, a whole lot. There wasn't a lot of people nice to them back in those days because the message that they had often uh, amen, was hard to hear uh, and the last was one of those. Amen. He preached, but he also done many miracles. And, 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 and this lady had shown him kindness every time that he passed by. And he called her before him and said, what would you have that I could do for you to repay you for the kindness that you've shown to us? Would you like to be spoken well of before the king? Or, or would you like for me to put you out in public? He basically said that everybody knows, uh, amen, how you've been and how good you've been to us. Uh, and she said, no. Uh, she said, I don't want any of those things. Uh, she said, I just want to live peaceably uh, and do what I can do to help you. Uh, well, she turns and walks off. Uh, and here stands Elisha and his servant Gehazi. Uh, and he looks at Gehazi and said, there's got to be something. Uh, amen, this woman has everything. Uh, she has money. She has wealth. She has prestige. Uh, amen. And and Elisha said, there's got to be something uh, that we can do to repay her. Uh, and Gehazi said, the only thing that I see uh, that is missing in this family uh, is they don't have a child. Uh, they don't have any children. Uh, and Elisha said, call her back in. Uh, and he looked at that Shunammite woman as she stood uh, in the door that day. Uh, and he said, about this time, uh, about the next season of life, uh, you're going to have a child. Uh, this lady was was older in years. Her husband was older in years and she'd never been able to have uh, any children because she was barren. Uh, and she looked at Elisha that day and this is very important to remember. Uh, she looked at him and she said Elisha, don't lie to me. Uh, amen. Don't mess with me. Uh, don't tell me I'm going to have a child if I'm not. Uh, a mother's heart. Uh, she had no children. Uh, and by her response Brother Micah, uh, she longed to have children and could not uh, have any. Amen. I don't understand how it works in life sometimes. Amen. There are people every day. Amen. That are throwing babies in dumpsters. Amen. And leaving them to the side. And why there's some amen that never have the ability to have any children. Amen. I've got one of those ladies in my life. Most of you know Sister Sue Bates that lives right over here not very far. Amen. The first person that I text this morning was, was Masu. I said, thank you for being a mama to me when you didn't have to be. Amen. Never been able to have children of her own. But about 25 years ago, she came into Rich to Church of God. And she inherited more children than she could shake the stick at. Amen. That lady is a mama to me. Amen. I can call her any time of the night or day. And I promise you that every one of the young people that's came through Rich to Church in the last 25 years, Years. When Sue Bates goes to bed at night, she's praying for me less like my own mama is. This lady was in the same shape, had no children. And Elisha said, God's going to give you a child. And she said, don't toy with me. Don't toy with me about that. Well, the story rocks on. Nine months later, a bouncing baby boy comes into this home. This lady is happy. Life is great. Her life is full. Everything is good. Elisha still goes by uh, and stays up in his room. Uh, amen. The little boy begins to grow uh, down through the years. Uh, he gets to be about six or seven years old. Uh, he goes out into the field one day with his daddy. Uh, and 
and mom was back at home doing her thing. And the little mouse baby boy is out there watching daddy work. And all of a sudden he looks up at his daddy and said, daddy, my head hurts. There's something wrong. And the daddy turns and takes him back home and puts him in his mama's arms. And the story goes that that lady rocked that baby in her arms until noon. And that little boy died. In her arms, a little boy is dead. A little boy that she didn't ask for, that God promised her because of her goodness. Can I throw this in right here? It pays to serve God. It pays to live right. It pays to do the right thing. Amen. God will bless you. Amen. God blesses me. Every, I thought about that this week, just riding down the road. Amen. God began to deal with me about I was thinking about this service today and praying about a lot of other things. And God began to remind me of his goodness in my life. Every day, Brother Norman, I'm blessed. And a lot of times it's things that I take for granted that just rolls by every single day. Amen. But God's good. Amen. This lady had her son. She had her promise. And now the promise is dead in her arms. What's a mama to do? What's a mama going to do? The Bible said that she took that baby up and she walked up those stairs to the man of God's chambers. She went up to Elisha's bed. She opened that door and took that baby in there and laid him on Elisha's bed. Amen. That's where it came from. That's where the miracle came from. And she carried him up and laid him on that bed. Sent one of the servants to her husband and said, send me a donkey and one of the servants. And he said, where are you going? And she said, I'm going to see the man of God. And he said, it ain't time for sacrifice. It ain't time for worship. Why are you going there? And all she could say was, it will be well. It is well. To put that in my terms, it's going to be all right. Amen. The boy is dead. The promise is dead. Laying up in a room by itself. But a mama's face said, God promised it to me. And it's going to be all right. A mama's face said, when the circumstances ashes look bleak, it's still going to be alright. A mama's face said, if God promised me, it'll come to pass. She got on that horse and she told that servant, you don't start whooping him until I tell you to stop. They rode, come across the mountain, got over to where Elisha was, and he looked across and he seen her coming. Told the hey, said, there comes that Shunammite woman. What in the world is she doing here? He told Gehazi, you go see what she wants. Gehazi runs out to meet him. She blows his doors off on the horse. She never slacks up. She didn't come to talk to him. He wasn't the one to give the promise. Gehazi turns and follows her up the hill. She runs up the mountain, runs where Elisha is, falls at his feet, grabs him around the ankles and he said, is everything all right? And she said, it shall be well. She told her husband, it is well. And now she's telling him, it shall be well. Amen. The faith of a mama, the faith of a mother. Amen. And she looked down and Elisha looks down at her and she said, I told you, don't play with me. Elisha said, what are you talking about? She said, didn't I tell you if I wasn't going to have a son or if I wasn't going to keep a son, didn't I tell you don't mess with me? Leave it alone? And Elisha said, Lord, why have you hid this thing from me? Elisha knew she was going to have a son. Elisha knew when it was going to happen. But Elisha didn't know that the promise had died. He looked at Gehazi, I had the servant, and said, take my staff, which represented the power, which represented the authority that the, 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 that the servant had, the authority that the apostle had, the authority that Elisha had. He said, take this uh, and lay it on him, and he'll be all right. And she said, no, that ain't good enough. 
She said, I don't want the servant to go. I didn't come to see the servant. I came to see the one that made the promise. I came the one to see the one that told me that everything was going to be good. I came to see the one that said you're going to have what you long for. Listen to me. I'm going to stop right here for just a moment. Don't ever quit praying. Don't ever quit cursing. Don't ever quit wondering. Don't ever trusting in God. Rest assured that God hears that answer to every prayer. You know the reason that I'm here today is because my mama knelt down every night and prayed over me and pled the blood. I had a brother that's older than me that got caught up in alcohol and done all kind of things that mama never knew about. But God kept his hand on him and whenever he came in at night staggering down the hall all he could hear was God don't let him go, God, get a hold of him. And if you stay, and if you claim the promise, listen to me. God said, if you raise them up in the way they should go, he wouldn't let them go. You keep praying. You keep searching. You keep hoping. And you keep trusting God. He will bring it to pass. But you got to keep praying. That little shooting of my woman said, the servant ain't good enough. You made the promise. She grabbed him by the hand and said, you coming home, <laughs> you're going to fix this. Amen. I'm going to stop right here. She kind of sounds like a lot of other women I know. But Michael, she's pretty forceful. Amen. <laughs> I see his head going that way. I mean, amen. It's hard to take sometimes. And what sometimes it takes a mama that's got her mind made up that says, no, it ain't going to be that way. I know I, I'm not trying to say I'm anything to anybody else. I never got caught up. I've never, I tasted one beer in my life. That's all I've ever done. Tried one cigarette. Tried one dip of snuff and was sick for four days. And I said, that ain't for me neither. I never got into a lot of stuff. Wendy and I started dating at 15. We, we, we went to church on Saturday night. Tony said, you date my daughter. You're going where we go. We're going to church. Amen. That didn't mean there wasn't some other stuff that we got into that others did. Amen. But my mama kept praying. When my brothers kind of got a little sideways. They come in the house and they look at mama, we'll do what we want to do. Mama said, no, you ain't. No, you ain't. Well, mama, my oldest brother was 17 years old. Standing in the church parsonage and he got sideways. But my little old mama was about five foot or something. And he popped off and she said, you will not talk to me that way. And he said, I'll do anything, I'll pop. He picked his stuff up out of the floor. He stood up. She said, you got something else to say? He said, no, ma'am, I'm done. Sometimes we got to be stand for what we know is right, for what we believe in. Sometimes you got to stand and look them in the eye. Some, my mama looked me in the eye and said, you can do whatever you want to do, but you belong to God. My mama laid me back on the altar and dedicated me to God and said, he's yours, and you do what you want to with him. And she said, you can go wherever you want to go and do what you want to do. You can run from your call to the day you die, but you still belong to God. And she said, you're going to do it, or God's going to not let you rest. Amen. My wife had a friend that she used to work with. She liked to party and she liked to do a lot of stuff. And Wendy tell her every day when they left work, I'm praying for you. And she would, she got to the point she would beg. She told Wendy, I, would you please quit praying for me? Wendy said, why you want me to quit praying? Because I'm so miserable I can't stand myself. I can't even drink a beer. I can't even go to a, but because all I can see is your face and I know your face and I can't stand it. She prayed anyway. Sometimes mama, 
Just keep on praying. Just keep on trusting. I mean, my mama couldn't change me. My mama couldn't change my brothers or my sister. But she knew a God that could. A God that would sooner or later get a hold of my heart and my life. Amen. And 25 years later, I'm still standing before you. Because a mama prayed. She said, that's not good enough. You made the promise. Hold God accountable for what he said to you. If you raised them right, God said they belong to you. Look up to heaven and say, God, this is my promise. And I claim. And I'm not giving up. Amen. I got her. She grabbed me by the hand and said, You coming home with me, boy? He sent Gehazi on ahead. Gehazi took the staff and went up in the house and laid it on that little boy, just like he was told. Nothing happened. Gehazi come back down. By this time, Elisha and the little Shunammite woman about to make it to the house. And he runs out and he meets Elisha and he says, Master, that didn't work. Elisha looked up to heaven and said, Lord, why do you keep my patience? I'm not putting this in my word. You read it on through. Elisha's like, Lord, why did why didn't you tell me? Lord, why, why that? This is somebody that could stretch that rod across a river and it would part. It had the power. And then Elisha had a mantle. Elijah had a mantle. Elisha had a staff. He also had the, the mantle that fell from heaven. Remember when he asked God, when Elijah said, you can have anything you want. And he said, I don't want nothing but a double portion of what you got. He took that rod and laid it on that little boy and nothing happened. The Bible said that Elijah or Elisha and the Shunammite woman got to the house. And they went up the room to where that little boy was. The Bible said Elijah walked in and looked at him. The little boy is laying there cold and light. It's been dead for days at this point. He turned around and he told the Shunammite woman, he said, you got to look, get out. And he took the hazy eye and he told him to get out too. And Elisha was left alone with that young man. But Micah, he prayed over that young man and nothing happened. He went down the stairs. The little Shunammite woman said, what's happening? He said, nothing. She said, remember, I told you, don't lie to me. Don't matter. Elisha's in a bad spot. He done what God told him to do. Now the little boy's dead. He done prayed and nothing happened and he went back up the stairs. And the Bible said that he laid his face upon the little boy's face and his hands upon his hands. And his chest upon his chest, he began to plead the blood again. And the little boy began to get warm. Oh, but a warm child is not a death. But my kid who's still no life. Now I'm going to speculate just a little bit. Knowing this woman's background, and how much faith she had and how much she believed God. I can't help but to believe that when Elisha was up the stairs praying for that little boy, at the bottom of those stairs, there was a mama that was down there calling upon God. Man, Elisha went down. The Bible said that he went down. I believe it's in the next verse that he walked around in the house. After he walked around in the house a few minutes, he turned and went back up those stairs again. He went up the stairs that time. He went up and he done the same thing again. He stretched himself out upon that 
child and he put his face upon his face again and his hands upon his hands again and he began to pray for that child and he began to ask God to bring life back into that. Let me stop right here. If you've got a child that is lost, don't, don't stop praying for God to do a lot of things to get them away from this or get them away from that. But maybe we need to start praying God just bring some life into them. God, let them have some life come into them one more time. Because if they get a hold of the life, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If they find, let all of them. Uh, you know, I was going to leave it right there. My God, when my boys look at me, do they see any life in daddy? Do they see any life in mama? How can I expect them to have life if I'm dead to, twice and plucked up by the roots of myself? Mama, you need to show them what it is to serve God. You need to let them know that there's power in the name of Jesus. They need to see you trust him. They need to see you pray. They need to see you study. They need to know that you know what life's all about. I can help people now because of things I've been through before because I can look at them and say I know where you are man my mama could look me in the eye and say God's going to get a hold of you because I knew God knew Brother Kyle preached last night on knowing who you are. There was no doubt. When my mama knelt down to pray, God knew who she was. And I had a little old grandma. I don't know if nobody in here, Miss Eloise back there, she probably remembers my grandma soul. My grandma <laughs> knelt to pray. All of heaven stood at attention. I never heard her shout. I never heard her speak in tongues. I never seen her run the aisles. But I've been at grandma's house when I was sick. And I've been at grandma's house when there was problems. And I've been at grandma's house when I didn't think that, that nothing could help. And all she had to do was stop that little rocking chair and say, come over here, son, and kneel down in front of my chair. And grandma would take you by the hand. And when she began to pray, things happened. Things changed. Why? Because she knew the life that she was talking about. Amen. She knew the life giver. Amen. Elisha got her. Elisha laid up on that boy the second time and began to pray for life and all of a sudden he went achoo 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 and he sneezed seven times <laughs> anybody ever seen a dead man sneeze man I've been in a couple of places where I thought they moved once or twice Man, I didn't stay long either. <laughs> Little boy began to sneeze. And he sneezed seven times. Anybody know what seven in the Bible means? He didn't just sneeze seven times by accident. He sneezed seven times because seven, seven, seven means completeness. Seven let, seven let the man of God know this was no accident. This was my doings. This was what I done. Anybody ever, I, I've had more sinuses in the last three or four weeks than I ever have. Oh, my old head will get so stopped up. Amen. But I can just before I feel like I'm about to sneeze, I'm riding down the road making faces. I turn, hey, when I freight train down a dirt road, because I know it's about to, and, and, but when I finally get that sneeze, it clears everything out seven times uh, that boy sneezed uh, amen he began to get warm uh, and he opened up his eyes uh, and looked at Elisha uh, you know what was going on at the bottom of the stairs uh, amen when Elisha told that boy to get up uh, and they walked out the door uh, down at the bottom of those stairs uh, there was a mama down there saying God I still believe you Lord I don't know what's going on up there but I know you're going to do it I don't know what's happening up there but I know you promise and I know you're faithful and I know you'll give me what I ask for it pays to be a mama that'll pray it pays to be a daddy that'll pray 
the last you turned, walked down those stairs, looked at that woman, and said, give him something to eat. Woo! What would have happened if when that boy died, She had just called the coroner, called the funeral home, put him in the ground, and just took what life looked like it had given her. That boy, we don't know what that boy grew up to be. We don't, we don't have any more record. After it. But Hakal, what would she have missed if she would have just accepted? Well, I guess this was just what was meant to be. And she'd have buried him and went on about her business. That's why I never thought about that either until right now. But Micah, if she wouldn't have laid him on that bed and had an attitude, it's going to be all right. all right because the man of God says we don't have to accept everything that life sends our way I heard people said my child's too far gone no he's not I've heard people say well there ain't no hope for him yes they are I got a friend right now that used to own one of the local beer establishments not very far from here and there's a whole lot of people that used to frequent his beer joint. And God got a hold of him one night outside of his own beer joint. And saved him in the parking lot, if I'm not badly mistaken. And today, this morning, that man was standing in his pulpit, pastoring his church. And those people that used to frequent his beer joint are now being saved in his altar. Because somebody said, it's not hopeless. It's not office. I don't care what your situation. Mama, don't quit praying. Don't keep trusting. Don't quit believing. You just hold on. That God said this is out. It ain't over till God says it's over. Amen. Amen. I have been to a place where I gave up on myself. And I went and sat down in my mom and daddy's room in their living room. A grown man married with two kids. And I looked at mom and daddy and I said, I'm done. It just ain't no hope. I can't go no more. And my mama come knelt down in front of me with them tears running down her face. And my daddy sat down beside me. And my mama said, you don't believe that and I know it. I said, yeah, I do. She said, don't give me that. See, my mama knew me better than I know myself. Your mama knows you a lot better than you think she does. Man, my mama said, you don't believe that. I said, mama, but it's hopeless this time. And my daddy said, oh, that's where you're wrong. <laughs> long as there's breath. This is my daddy's saying is, as long as there's breath, there's hope. Man, what if she would have just threw him in a hole and buried him? What if the next time Elisha came by, brother, Michael, she'd have had to say, well, that boy you promised me, we buried him a few weeks ago. But to her faith said, it is well. And when Elisha said, is everything all right? She said, it will be. Mama, adopt this it is well. Daddies, adopt that it is well mentality. You may not see it now. You may not can see it with your eyes. I told you the story last week, I believe it was, about Sister Lisa Tipton. Out in the Church of God that night, God gave her a vision of her, of, of her son. 
being saved. He had told her, I want nothing to do with God. He was as close to an atheist as you've ever been. But that night in our church, God gave her a vision of her son being saved. And she stood up and said, I see him coming. I see him coming. I see him coming. That young man's in heaven today. God took him cancer, took him out. But God saved him just like he showed that mama. Because she left my church that night. She hugged my neck. And she said, there ain't a doubt in my mind. God's going to save my boy before he takes him out. Huh? Well, there's another young lady. I can tell you her name. She never had any kids either. She was standing around one night getting ready to sing. Her and her husband had been praying for God to give them some children. Since so she walked across the front of that room, and there was a switch laying on the front pew where somebody had whooped their child the week before. And she said, Boy, I'll be glad when the day comes I can whoop her. God said, but why don't you just show me? She had three names picked out for two girls and a boy. She picked up that switch. She walked over to that other side and she called that first child's name and she popped that pin. You straighten up. I told you later. She called the second one's name and she popped that pew again. She called the third one's name and she said, you, you're the worst. And she pulled, picked him up and whooped him. She didn't see him. But her face said, God promised me. <laughs> and God's going to give him to me. God was faithful. God was faithful. That young lady that sat in this building last Sunday morning, Sister Trish, with two kids back there on the back, they told her there was no way. And one Easter we came and she had a, a little bag. And inside of there was a little note that said, God is faithful. She didn't get one kid, she got two. And how many more stories do you know of people that God has been faithful with? Maybe that's you. God's faithful. God is faithful. And the same God that was faithful to bring you here is the same God that will see you through. You just got to hold on and have that faith that you once had to get you to this place. The mama's faith. It is well. It shall be well. Stand with me all over. The Where are you today? I'm not going to drag this out. I know it's Mother's Day. You leave this room this morning. I hope you have a mindset in your mind. There ain't nothing my God can do. It is well. If you see it, it's well. My brother that's a little older than me, it don't matter what happens. Many of them was fishing. And they come up a storm on the lake. Lightning popping all around us. Keep back the truck down the hill. We were trying to get the boat up in there to go to the house. And whenever we closed the door, it locked them all. We standing out there popping all around. We couldn't get, the, couldn't get back in the truck. Had the boat loaded, standing there running down at a mate. I looked over at him. He said, it'll be all right. No matter what happened to this house, it can all fall apart. He'll look at us. He'll look at Charlotte and say, it'll be all right. One day out of mama's, he said, it, and she said, everything won't be all right. He said, yeah, well, it'll be all right. How do you know that? I know who I am and who I serve, and I know that God is still faithful.